By the end of this video, you should be able to create an application that can send information to the web viewer and receive information back from the web viewer. Let's get started. Hello and welcome back to another Thunkable Tip. My name is Donal and in this one we're continuing on our tutorial about the web viewer. So in the last video what we did was loaded in some HTML and CSS directly into this web viewer component. What we're going to do today is um, increase the difficulty level a little bit by adding in some JavaScript as well. And to do that what we're going to do is pass a, a piece of information back and forth between our app here, let's say it's from a text box, could be from your sensor, could be from any input at all that you like, and we're going to send it to the web viewer. So in our blocks at the moment, this is what we had from the previous tutorial, we were just sending uh, HTML and CSS data using this um, piece of information here, data colon text forward slash HTML comma, like that. And what we're going to do is put in a little bit of JavaScript in here, and that's going to allow us to read information from our app and it'll also allow us to write information back to the app as well. So this isn't something that I've invented or created myself. In fact, you can go to the uh, Typhon's website here, it's purevitaapps.com and uh, he's got loads and loads of great snippets and um, documentation about how um, these different types of components work. So the property here that we're going to use, with, uh, use is called the web view string. So this is in here in our web viewer. Um, so in here we've got get the web view string and we're also able to set the web view string like so. Uh, what we're gonna do then is because we're working with JavaScript, I'm gonna put this out here for a moment. We're gonna create a pair of script tags for ourselves like this and um, script that. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed the bit of HTML yesterday. If you want to see more, let me know. Uh, but in order to create some JavaScript on our page, we need script tags. Uh, what we'll do is we'll create a variable called input because we're going to be receiving an input from uh, the app in this case, and we're going to set it then to be the um, the web view string. So to do this, what we're going to do is use the uh, window dot app inventor capital A and capital I uh, inventor and then the method we're using or the function we're going to use is called get web view string like this uh, so once you type in that command uh, we'll finish our statement with a semicolon and then what we'll do is just to test that it's worked we'll use a little pop-up a little alert like this so we'll do alert and then we'll display whatever we got from the input. Don't forget your semicolon at the end there, and that should be okay to test it out. Then what we'll do is, of course, we have to set the web view string. So that will be this one here, like this. So we'll use the text from our um, text box. We'll use the web view string property to send it to the web viewer. And then in the web viewer itself, we use this little bit of JavaScript to get the web view string from our app. So this get web view string and is what's going to allow us to read the information from our app. Over here in my live testing then, I've just got a text box at the bottom of the screen. Uh, let's say uh, this is uh, the input. And when we click the button here, we should get an alert on our screen. So that pop-up then has been generated or been called by the uh, web viewer itself. Remember I don't have any uh, notifiers uh, in this app so uh, we're able to successfully now send information to the app. Let's send some information back. Um, let's go back here. Okay so this little bit of JavaScript then allows us to get information from the app and display it in the web viewer. But what if we want to communicate the other way around? What if we want to send information from the web viewer and have it display in our app? So to do that, other than or rather than using get web view string, what we'll do is use the set web view string. So again, we'll do window dot app inventor capital A capital I, and then uh, set with a small s web view string. 
And then what we can do is type in any message that we like. So for example, understood or received or gotcha, understood, like this. Close parens, semicolon to finish your statement, like that. And to pick up this message then, we could have some sort of event if we wanted. But what I'll do is I'll just add in a button here really quickly to, uh, we won't bother changing the text or anything just yet, but now that we've got the text, when this button is clicked, um, we will read the web view string and we can display it in our title. So let's go to screen one. Let's find the title property like this. And then in our web viewer one, we have this option here to get the web view string right here. So uh, clicking button one changes the web view string. Uh, clicking button two allows us to display that on our screen. So, so let's have a look at this now in our live testing app. Uh, what I can do is type in, uh, you know, my input, anything we want to know, like this. Clicking on the first button uh, displays that in our alert, so we can click OK. And then clicking button two fetches the uh, new web view string and displays it in the title. So we've got understood back there. Okay, so this is just a, a gentle introduction then to the web view string property. Again, it opens up a huge amount of possibilities for you to get information from your users and to store it maybe in a web view and then to manipulate it, to style it maybe using CSS um, and then to um, yeah, do other things with the data using some JavaScript if you've got some JavaScripting skills. But it's a very useful property and one that we're just kind of scratching the surface of. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. If you want to see more videos, then what you can do is click on the subscribe um, button with the notification bell as well. And if you have any questions, and again, I'm sure there's plenty of questions about this type of component, leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.